welcome to our video on the essentials of epidemiology where we'll be going through and discussing the different components of this public health domain. First up, we'll go through and define what is epidemiology. This word derives its roots from the Greek language and is literally translated to mean the study of people with three fundamental assumptions to include. One, disease does not occur by chance. Two, disease is not randomly distributed. Three, disease distribution is caused by something. And with that in mind, we're going to revisit our two-part definition of epidemiology discussed in our earlier video. Again, this is the study of the distribution and determinants of health-related states or events in the prevention and control of human diseases within human populations. From there, we're going to cover two types of epidemiologic studies, descriptive versus analytic, and this is to determine whether an association exists between different disease-causing factors in order to establish causality. The variables I'm referring to, we have three different types we'll cover, one being your exposure variable, two being your health outcome, and three being risk factors, which can further be categorized to two, your non-modifiable risk factors versus your modifiable risk factors. From there, we'll discuss how these risk factors have contributed to the epidemiologic transition, and we'll go through and define this. And lastly, we'll go through the different levels of disease that exist within epidemiology and focus on selected examples that you can also find further reading from the Public Health Epidemiology textbook that is mentioned in the description of this video. So first up, we'll be discussing descriptive versus analytic epidemiologic studies. We'll start with descriptive studies, which focus on the first part of the definition of epidemiology, distribution, describing person, place, and time factors. These can be answered via the five W's. This is a mnemonic. Number one, your first W is what. This is defining the health concern. Number two is the who, the second W. This is defining the human population, which there are two types that exist, one being your fixed population. This is also known as a closed human population, where a group of individuals are identified at some point in time and followed for a given period for detection of new diseases. Here, there are no exits and no new entries, hence making the population fixed or closed. Whereas the second type is a dynamic population. This is also referred to as open because it is continually changing, allowing for both the addition of new members and the loss of previously entered members during the follow-up period, an example of which being the population of a city. This is very important to define in epidemiology so that we know who gets the disease. For example, men have a greater risk of heart disease than women. Number three, our third W is the when. So this is referring to the time factor. When does a disease occur? For example, influenza peaks in the winter time. Number four, our fourth W refers to the where or the place of disease. So where does this disease occur? An example of this, prostate cancer arises at a greater rate at higher latitudes. This refers to the geography. Number five, our last W, this stands for why and refers to the causes or risk factors of a disease. And while it is listed under the descriptive studies, this also falls into the category of analytic studies. So just to recap, descriptive studies mostly refer to person, place, and time. And we'll go through and define the analytic studies, which are going to focus on the second part of the epidemiology definition, the determinants part. These are going to aim to establish an association between cause and effect or an exposure variable and a health outcome variable. Unfortunately, this isn't always that simple of an equation where there are two factors. Sometimes we have risk factors or confounding factors even that may obscure this relationship and we'll go through and define these different types of risk factors. One being our modifiable risk factors, and two being our non-modifiable risk factors. So some examples of this 
are things that you cannot change, things you are born with. So your age, your sex, your race, your genetics. These are all things you cannot change. They are not modifiable. Whereas your modifiable risk factors are things you can change. For example, your diet, your smoking status, your environment to some extent. And these are very important to define because they lead into our next topic of discussion, the epidemiologic transition. As changing patterns have occurred in populations, the scope of epidemiology has broadened accordingly. This epidemiologic transition is a way of looking at and understanding the relationship among these shifting population dynamics, disease, and death. So, in this slide, we'll go through and describe the epidemiologic transition with its changing patterns. Four things, really. As human populations have progressed, different causes of death have occurred. Fertility rates have changed. Life expectancy has also increased. And population age, as a result, has also increased. Prime example of this is that mortality rates from infectious diseases or communicable diseases have decreased. Mortality referring to death, deaths that occur in a population. Whereas morbidity rates from chronic or degenerative diseases known as non-communicable diseases have increased where morbidity designates illness. And this refers to our epidemiologic transition. From here, we can go through and define different levels of disease. The amount of a particular disease that is usually present in a community is referred to as the baseline or its endemic level of the disease. Whereas a sporadic disease refers to one that occurs infrequently and irregularly. This is in contrast to hyperendemic diseases that are persistent and high levels of disease occurrence. And lastly, these next two definitions are ones we've discussed in our previous video and are important to the study of epidemiology, where epidemics refer to a sudden increase of cases and pandemics are ones that cross borders across several countries. With this, we'll go through a selected example that we briefly touched on in our previous video as well. Remember, John Snow was our first epidemiologist who conducted a natural experiment in the 1800s due to a cholera outbreak where there were clusters of disease in London. This was the first epidemiologic research study to be conducted that led to the implementation of interventions. This next picture I've pulled up is a summary of everything we've discussed so far that relates to epidemiology with decreasing mortality rates increasing morbidity rates due to this epi transition and so from here we'll go to our black screen of spaced repetition and quiz ourselves over important concepts in epidemiology one true or false epidemiology examines disease occurrence among human populations yes this is very true many functions of epidemiology exist overall this is known as population medicine Number two, true or false, are your genetics a modifiable risk factor? False. You cannot change your genetics, making them non-modifiable risk factors. Number three, true or false, behavior can be both a risk factor and outcome variable. This is true. This is something we discussed on our slide of descriptive versus analytic studies where different variables can act at many different levels. Lastly, is diabetes a communicable disease? False diabetes is a non-communicable disease. It is not of infectious origin. And with that said, our next slide is an overview of everything that was discussed in this video. Please subscribe below, like, and share.